Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner, available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode, I'm going to discuss optimization flags and levels that I'm guessing you probably don't know exist. Because I didn't know some of them existed until recently, not that I know all of the optimization flags and levels that exist on all compilers, but I'm going to specifically talk about the intersection overlap of optimizations that exist in Clang and GCC. And this is not going to be an exhaustive search of all of the possible things that you can do. We're going to look at the high level, big O, optimization levels, dash capital O. And we're going to see just a little bit of what some of the differences are. We're not going to do a head to head comparison necessarily, but we're going to look at some of the differences. So you're probably familiar with dash 0, 01, 02, and 03. Now, if you're old like I am, you might remember a day when people would do dash 04, 05, 06 because they thought that would do even more optimizations. But I hate to break it to you, no compiler has actually supported anything greater than 03 since ever. If you do a higher number, it's being ignored by the compiler, but we'll dig into that in just a moment here. So to start with, I'm on GCC's optimization page. I'll zoom in as much as I can here. So we've got dash O levels. So dash O1 turns on some optimizations. Are we going to go through what all of these things are? No, we're not going to go through them all. Dash O2 enables that many more things. Dash O3 optimizes yet more, as it says. Dash O0 reduce compilation time and make debugging produce the expected results. This is the default. So O0 is the default, no optimization. Notice that there's nothing greater than dash O3 there. And then we have dash OS. This enables all O2 optimizations except for those that increase code size. So it's O2 with some things disabled. So that's supposed to be OS is reduce for uh, the size, optimize for side. Dash O fast disregards strict standards compliance. O fast enables all three optimizations, but also enables optimizations that are not valid for standard compliant programs, such as fast math and some Fortran things. Now, fast math allows the compiler to reorder floating point operations. I am planning at some point to do a video on floating point math on my other channel, on the Retro Programmer. That won't be here. Um, and we might see in that episode what that would mean, why a reordering of math operations could cause problems. But basically, if you don't care about the accuracy of your results, feel free to enable fast math and dash O fast. OG, optimize for the debugging experience. So OG should be the optimization level of choice for standard edit, compile, debug cycle. So if you're going and you want fast build times, but you also want to be able to debug, but you also don't want gigantic slow running code, OG, this should be your option. So it's all dash O1 optimization flags, except for those that may interfere with debugging. So what I had up here to start with is a version of my ARM emulator, const expert ARM emulator, that is doing nothing. We don't want to execute this program right now. I'm saying run this system, but the system has been initialized with all who knows what in the memory. We just want to see what happens and the compiler generates this call to run the system. I wanted something big enough, but not something huge. So we got something that's generating 1061 instructions here, and this is at dash 03. So let's take this back to dash 0 and see just how much code it generates, which is going to be a lot. See here, we can actually see each function being generated. In dash 03, many of the functions are being inlined, and therefore we didn't actually see them being generated. So this is 3945. We're going to take this 01 and we're going to see how the size of this changes as it inlines more. That's 1327. 
1132. Now O3 theoretically becomes bigger again because it does more inlining, but it's actually smaller again. What I have personally observed is that O3 often, when there's a lot of inlining available to us, actually results in smaller binaries because it has the ability to inline more and then do more uh, constant folding, dead code elimination, and that kind of thing. So we've got O3 and we want to compare this to OS. Now OS is supposed to optimize for small binaries, and it is in fact a little bit smaller than dash O3. And then we have OG, and I'm not going to dig into this, but recall that OG is O1, but optimized for the debugability experience. It seems that it in fact did do a pretty good job. We're at a pretty small binary here with the ability to actually, so we don't, we have a inlining being done. We don't see all of those individual function names. And, uh, but we have the ability to actually debug this code. That's the ultimate goal here. So, so there should be enough debugging information passed along that we can debug this. That's all interesting. I don't expect OFAST to do anything different than O3 because I don't have any floating point operations in this code. So there's nothing for it to reorder here. And that looks like it's the same or basically the same. So that's GCC. We covered just at a very high level OS, which is supposed to be optimized for size, O0, which is no optimization, 1, 2, and 3 are varying levels of optimization with more or less inlining. OG, optimized for debugability. OFAST makes no difference in this code if we're not doing floating point operations. That now brings us around to Clang. And I'm going to have to switch compilers in a minute to look at Clang. But we've got the O0, O1, O2, O3 that we expect. Now we also see dash O4 and higher currently equivalent to dash O3. So they'll allow you to put dash O29 if you want to, but it's still going to be O3. And we've got O fast as we expected. OS is like O2, but with smaller code. Then we see another interesting one here. OZ, like OS and thus like O2, but reduces code size even further. So if the smallest binary possible is your goal, you need to check out Clang's OZ. And now we have OG, which Clang added for feature parity with GCC, but at the moment, it is just basically a symlink to O1. They don't actually do any of these different tweaks that GCC did to actually make your code more debuggable. And we're going to compare this dash OS. Let's start with OS because this is the only thing that's different between Clang and GCC. We're at 992 instructions. I'm going to go to a modern Clang. And for the sake of this, I'm going to go for the last official release, which is going to be Clang 11. So 992 versus 920. So we can already see, and we're not stepping through all these things, but we can already see that Clang is able to make slightly smaller code with OS. Let's see what OZ does. 920, OZ. And this could be a very fascinating study to actually go through and see exactly what code changed. But OZ, to optimize for even smaller code than OS, seems to have ballooned it by about 30%. So that might not have been a success story there. And I just put it on O3 here for comparison. O3 is a little bit smaller than OZ, a little bit bigger than OS. So what did we learn here? We're just browsing through the binary that's being created, or at least the assembly that's being created. There's so much experimentation you could do. You could compare all these different versions side by side, see why and where and how code is gained and lost. You could run your own experiments on your own code to see which one actually produces faster binaries. It's theoretically possible that OS or OZ could actually be a faster binary than O2 or O3 if it allows more code to fit in the CPU's cache. So if you really care and you're in an industry 
where it matters to you exactly how long each operation takes and you are optimizing down to the nanosecond or to the picosecond, you probably need to actually compile your binaries with OS, OZ, O3, O2, and maybe O1 on both GCC and Clang, if you're uh, distributing on Linux, and compare the specific performance metrics that you care about for each of those seven or eight binaries produced against each other to see for your specific code layout at that specific moment which one actually gives you the performance that you need. So no easy answer here. Um, there's really no telling with any particular source file what exactly we should expect. So be sure to play with this and see what you can learn with the code base that you're currently working on. And be sure to subscribe if you like content like this.